Welcome to the 33rd annual World Fly Fishing Championships from Mursuen in East Central Norway. Run by the International Federation of Sports Fly Fishing, more commonly referred to as FIPS Moosh, the championship attracts anglers from all corners of the globe, and the 125 anglers will be representing 27 different nations in this year's event. For the first time this year we welcome a team from Outer Mongolia. The event headquarters are found in the Fru Haugens Hotel in the centre of Mursuen, which is the most important town in the Helgoland district. Many of the anglers are regular competitors to this event. Others are here for the first time. Old friendships are being renewed, new bonds forged. It's a true melting pot of nations and language. While the competition is taken very seriously for three days, outside of the fishing sessions, there is a free exchange of ideas, jokes and stories. As one competitor commented, it doesn't matter if we speak different languages, we all know the language of fishing. Many anglers arrive for practice in the weeks and days before the event. Some hire their own transport, others rely on the buses provided by the organisers. By the time the official practice day arrives, tactics have been decided, the tackle checked and rechecked, and the fly selected. The Vesna region is a land of mountains, lakes and rivers, isolated by distance from larger population centres and therefore largely unspoilt. This isolation ensures an abundance of wildlife, beautiful scenery and breathtaking views. Sector 1, the Vefsna. This section runs from Skogstad to just upstream of the Laxforsen waterfalls. Wide and with strong currents, this part of the river will be fished from the east bank. Wading will be necessary to reach the deeper parts of the river, where many of the trout will be lying. All four eligible species may be caught in this sector. Sector 2, Austervefsna, or East Vefsna. This sector runs from a narrow gorge upstream of the community of Trofors into the town centre at the confluence of the Vefsna. The lower sections are believed to provide a good chance of larger catches of predominantly brown trout. Sector 3, Fippling del Selva. The Fippling del Selva river runs from the Stroforsen waterfall into Lake Nordil Skormaira. It is a much smaller and intimate water and lies about an hour from Mursun. Sector 4, Storvadnet. This lake has been divided into two for the competition. One half has been used earlier in the week for practice, the other will be fished in the competition. Fishing will be from rowing boats. Two anglers will fish in each boat, with a local controller doing the rowing. This is a very clear natural lake with a good stock of wild brown trout. Sector 5, Svartvatnet. A small, almost circular lake, this sector is expected to be the most difficult. Anglers drawing a beat here in the first two sessions are expected to gain a big advantage. Brown trout are again the target species.
This is both a team and individual competition. National teams will each comprise of five individual anglers. The match will take place over three days and each angler will fish a three-hour session on each of five different venues. The fishing will be done with fly tackle and only artificial flies may be used as bait. All hooks must be barbless and all fish must be safely returned to the water after they have been measured. Every angler will be allocated a stretch of water, which is known as a beat, where they will fish. One of the lakes will be fished in a similar way from the bank, but the other will be fished from drifting boats, uh, rowed by a local controller. The anglers are drawn into groups, and each group is assigned to a particular venue for each session. The draw for individual beats on the venue takes place on the buses on the way to each venue, and is kept a secret until they reach the river or lake. The scoring is based on the length of eligible fish caught. Only brown trout, sea trout, grayling and arctic char will count, and these fish must measure 18 centimetres or more to score points. Each legal fish is worth 100 points plus a further 20 points per centimetre. So a 20 centimetre fish will be worth 500 points. The formalities begin on Sunday afternoon when the teams are officially welcomed to the event and the draw is made to decide team numbers and individual places and work out the rotor for each of the fishing sessions. A happy but expectant crowd gathered in the hotel's restaurant. At least one representative of each competing nation was there. Some were laughing, some were serious. All were anxious to find out who would be in their respective groups. The draw itself is gratifyingly low-tech, with numbered table tennis balls being drawn from a china mixing bowl. The FIPS officials preside over the draw, and as each ball is drawn, the number is read out. As each nation's number is called, the looks of expectation change. Some to relief, others look a lot less happy. Group E was quickly identified as the strongest group on paper, with several favourites for the individual title drawn together. Finally it was all over and the full draw and individual groupings can now be found on the official website. I hope that uh, our team will do it very well. Um, this is an opportunity to promote uh, fly fishing uh, as the fantastic sport it is. Uh, and uh, especially it's a possibility to promote uh, fly fishing among uh, young uh, people children, youth. It's a fantastic sport for, uh, for children. So uh, I hope that we, as a result of this championship, will have um, a growth in the interest for fly fishing in our region and also in Norway as a total. The strong favourites to retain the team title are the team from the Czech Republic. Experienced anglers with many World Championship medals between them, any one of their five-man team can take an individual medal. Also very consistent in this format of competition, the Italian team has had a solid practice period and they cannot be discounted. Other teams that have a good chance include England, as the format of this year's competition should work to their advantage. Scotland will also have a good chance for the same reason. 
Of course, the host nation Norway and next-door neighbour Sweden will both be very familiar with this type of angling. Uh, beautiful waters, beautiful fish, challenging fishing at times on certain venues, but uh, we managed to catch fish everywhere we've been so far. Yeah, first time over here, which is fantastic. Only been competing for three years now, so I heard a lot about it, so really great to be here finally. And I understand you guys have been doing some serious fundraising so that you could come for a, a longer time than perhaps some of the other teams. Yeah, we have to. Things are a bit more expensive over here in Norway than they are back in Australia, so uh, and we don't get any funding at all, so we've got to come up with all the money ourselves. So we've run a lot of fundraising ventures in, uh, in Australia, and fortunately, um, yeah, we, we didn't have to fork out too much money. Uh, yeah, the Canadian team's my favourite team, Thanks, but we'll, we'll try our hardest. It's good to have confidence. It is. And I wish you well for the results. Thank really you very good. much. Thank you. Malta isn't a country that I'd expect to find in the Fly Fishing World Championships. Oh, you'd still find them in the fishing championships somewhere in the world because they're really good fishermen. Is there any fly fishing in Malta? Uh, a little bit uh, off the coast for tuna and lampuki. I've been told you're one of the favourites to win this as the individual. Um, who would your money be on? I think someone's been lying to you, I think. Uh, yeah, a bit, bit rich to be, uh, to be a favourite when in your first one. Um, look, it's hard to go past the checks. Uh, they've just been consistent for such a long period of time. Um, so people like Martin Droz, uh, Thomas Adam, um, you know, those guys, are, you know, obviously they've been the best for a long, long time. So really the money would have to be on them. Um, John Horsey from England, um, he's been a consistent performer for a long time. And uh, I think he'd be a popular winner too, John, if he got over the line. Um, very popular amongst all the anglers. So I think that's probably where, where most of your money is going to lie. Over there. Obviously some of the Italians have, have performed very well over the years too, so I would say somewhere in Europe I reckon you're going to get your champion from there probably, but uh, we'll be trying hard to knock them off. Oh, it's going to be a mixed bag this time around because it's going to be all over the place. I think after the first day it'll sort itself out. Um, the Czechs are always in, in with a chance and uh, um, the other teams, uh, they're pretty good, so they'll give them a run for their money. On the morning of the competition, the anglers board buses and set off for their respective sectors. Beat 8. Netherlands, Richard van Dongen. On arrival, the sector judge announces the draw for the beats. The anglers leave the coach, collect their equipment and go and meet their respective controllers. These are the people responsible for measuring and recording any fish caught. Some anglers appear nervous, others quietly confident. The sector got off to a slow start, and it was only as the sun rose and the water temperature was raised that the fish began feeding. Last year's runner-up, Valerio Santi Amantini of Italy, caught four fish. Meanwhile, Australia's Jonathan Stagg, on the downstream end of the section, took seven legal fish. Upstream of these two was Lobos Koza of the Czech Republic. Lobos carefully worked his way across the river, exploring every possible hiding place, fishing with deep nymphs. His persistence was rewarded with six legal fish, and this will give him a place in the top three anglers. All of his fish were brown trout, and each one was carefully measured and then returned to the water. Still further upstream, England's youngest angler, Scott Nellings, did even better. Also fishing with nymphs, Scott worked through the nearside riffles and channels. After a frustrating and fishless 90 minutes of exploring the river, the young angler justified his selection in the team as he finally found a pocket of water holding a good number of fish. And he finished with nine to lead the sector in the number of fish caught. Yeah, it was pretty tough first thing. Uh, once the sun got out, the warm, warm the water warmed up a touch and I think the fish came on a bit. There was a few fly life came off and caught a fair few in the, in the, in the end, yeah. And you ended up with nine fish? I did, yes. Uh, first one didn't come until about 10.45, so I was a bit nervous when that first one hit the net. It was a bit of a sigh of relief, and from there in on, it was just one after the other after the other. So, yeah, it was a good morning. Jimmy Holstrom of Sweden waded as deep as he possibly could in an effort to find a productive spot, but to no avail, and he was unable to register a legal fish. Yes, it was a disappointing time. It thought really well in the beginning. I catch one fish, but it was too small. And after 10 minutes, I get one really big, 
broke the tip and it go away. Then it was totally out of fish. And do you know how the rest of your team have done? <sighs> yes, I know. <laughs> and you seem happy. No, I'm not happy about that. This uh, is disappointing that we have blanks in the team. Leaving it late, Luis Antunes of Chile landed a fish in the last 30 seconds of the match to leapfrog over the pack and into sixth place. Elsewhere on the sector, there were a number of blanks, including the Norwegian and Swedish anglers. Svartvat Net sits high in the mountains, surrounded by trees. The name translates as Black Lake, and for some it lived up to its gloomy name. The number of anglers and the extra fishing pressure was expected to make fishing difficult. John Horsey's beat was full of features. In theory, these features should hold trout, and so it proved, with John catching three to reach joint fourth place. As expected, this lake proved to be difficult for most, and despite the anglers sticking doggedly to the task, most found the fish uncooperative, and only 14 anglers managed to catch. Leading the field was Thomas Adam of the Czech Republic, who fished superbly well to land seven fish, and in second place was Zdemko Nemchik with four fish, and third, Jean-Guillaume Mathieu, also with four fish. The results of session one. In sector one, in first place was Andrea Adrovino of Italy. In second place, Bertrand Jacquemin of France. And third, Lance Egan of the USA. In sector two, in first place, Scott Nellings of England. Second place, Jonathan Stagg of Australia. And in third place, Lubos Rosa of the Czech Republic. In sector three, first place, Julian Lorquet of Belgium. In second place, Julian Daguillons of France. Third place, Pavel Chaiba of the Czech Republic. Sector four, in first place, Gregor Golofit of Poland. In second place, Sebastien Delcour of France. In third place, Thoralf Thorstensen of Norway. In sector five, in first place, Thomas Adam of the Czech Republic. In second place, Zdenko Nemchik of Slovakia and in third place Jean-Guillaume Mathieu of France. The overall leaderboard in first place Andrea Adraveno of Italy, second Scott Nellins of England, third Julianne Lorquet of Belgium, fourth Thomas Adam of the Czech Republic, fifth Gregor Golofit of Poland, sixth Sebastian Delcourt of France, seven Bertrand Jacquemin of France, and eight, Jonathan Stagg of Australia. And the team result in first place at the moment are France, second place Poland, third place the Czech Republic, in fourth place Portugal, in fifth place Norway, sixth are England, seventh the Netherlands, and eighth Slovakia.